Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. For Ruby Snack 15, we are going to continue our Deploy to Digital Ocean series with part four, Deploy and Troubleshoot. Dun, dun, dun. What we'll go over in this episode is how to check the deploy. Go ahead and deploy and troubleshoot. We're gonna need to rake our secret and then set our environmental variables. If you'd like to code along, you'll need a Rails app created, a virtual private server set up. We're using DigitalOcean in this mini course, and you'll need to have Capistrano set up in your app. You can, of course, check out these other videos from the series, Ruby Snack number 13 and 14. And you might want to go ahead and check out number 12, which is the first one. Our first step today is step 18, check deploy. We'll run the command to check the Capistrano setup, which is simply cap staging deploy check and we will deal with any errors. For example, I encountered a permission error, so I had to go and give my user, which is deploy, the ability to change that folder. Let's walk through it. In the terminal in our app, I will run the cap staging deploy check command, and we'll run a couple of things, and here we go. We have our error that says I don't have permission. So now I'm going to SSH into the production server and add those permissions to my deploy user. So that's with this chown command. And I'll have to include my password. And that's done so that I can exit and try again. So I will run the deploy check command again. And this time it succeeds. You'll just need to keep running that deploy check until it succeeds and deal with any errors that come up. Now we're ready to deploy to staging, finally, right? That doesn't mean our troubleshooting is done though. So we will run the cap staging deploy, but sometimes errors come up. For example, I encountered an error where I was missing a JavaScript runtime. So I had to add the Ruby Racer gem and then I also had to deal with the missing device secret key. That's something that's kind of new, so this is the first time I encountered it, and I had to include that then in my app. Stack Overflow is your friend with dealing with these troubleshooting things because things change, and that's a great resource. Let's run through these so you can see how I handled each troubleshooting step. So now we're just gonna cap staging deploy and we'll watch it go through. You wanna kinda of watch it, especially the first time. And so, oh, it had trouble pre-compiling. So if we look through, it says that the exception happened because it could not find the JavaScript runtime. It gave us a link, so I go ahead to the link and I read about it and I say, okay, I'm gonna choose the Ruby Racer gem that actually comes in the gem file. It's just commented out in case you don't need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and now include it in my app. So I need to bundle, install it. It installs. Then I need to get committed so that it's in my app. And I will add the Ruby Racer gem. It's important to remember to commit these things and then push them to your repository or else the error will still be there. So now it's pushing to Origin Master. And let's try again. It's running again. Gets up to that pre-compiled stage. And it has another error. Let's see. We'll scroll on up. And this time it gives me that devise secret that it's missing. So I'll need to copy that secret. I'm going to use an environmental variable because you don't want secrets right in your code, which leads us to our next step in which we need to rake the secret for the app. And then we'll have the last environmental variable we'll need to include. So we'll need to SSH into the server, CD into the newest release. It's not fully deployed yet, but it'll be there. And then we will rake the secret in there. You'll copy the output and paste somewhere safe so that we can use it in the next step. Back in the terminal, let's SSH into our deploy server so that we can get that secret. And so we'll need to navigate to where the app is. So we've said that it's in 
Ver, www, and then we have it in Ruby Thursday staging. And we'll go to releases and we'll list out those releases because it's a long string of numbers that represents the date and the time. So let's CD into the most recent one. See, I have two because I tried to deploy twice. So we'll deploy into that. And it's a long thing there. So let's see what it is. LS, make sure that we are in fact in a Rails app. And we are. So now we need to rake the secret. And we need to copy that output somewhere safe so that we can use it. There are a couple of ways you can deal with setting environmental variables. In this episode, I'll show you how to put them directly into your Bash profile on the production server. We'll open that profile document, scroll to the bottom, and include all of the environmental variables. So I've listed out ones that I know you'll need for this app. You'll just need to put in your email and username and your email password. After saving, it's a good idea to check the variables, and you do that by typing echo and then the dollar sign and then the name of the variable. Then you exit the server. I made a little text document so that I could easily copy and paste into the production server. So now here we are. We're still in there, so I'm just going to CD back to the home. And I will sudo nano profile. So that's open. And I have to include my password. So here we are. So let's you have to just arrow down all the way and then paste in those variables. Be sure to use your real username and password for your email. So, so control X, Y, and save it. And now I'll exit. Let's try deploying again, see if we have resolved all of the issues with the secret for device up to that precompile. And it's working. I think it's doing better. Oh, it moved past, so now it's going to migrate. Does that, and Passenger restarts the app. And dun, 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 drum roll, please. Success! That's it for this episode. In our next episode, which will be the final installment in this mini course, we'll get to see all our hard work pay off. Be sure to check out some of the resources I used for completing this episode. Of course, there's a little Stack Overflow link for you for how I learned about the missing device secret key. If you are watching this on Ruby Thursday, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking that big red button right there. The YouTube subscribers get the episode just a little bit before everyone else. And if you're on YouTube watching this, be sure to head over to rubythursday.com to sign up for my mailing list because the mailing list gets some fun emails and so you don't want to miss that. If you have any questions or things that come up troubleshooting for you that didn't come up for me, be sure to leave a comment and I'll help you as best I can. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.